All right, in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how I like to build a prospect generator using actually make.com, Google Slide, and Card for the front end. Uh, as you see on the screen over here, we actually have a make scenario, which I'm gonna go through uh, step by step, but we also have the front ends over here where basically people can actually just go input the name, the company details, the emails, the subject about the lead magnet that they want to receive, uh, but also some summary of, uh, of what they want to actually uh, cover on the lead magnet. I'm gonna go through a generation together, so you're gonna see in real time uh, how it looks like, and they would actually receive a super ultra personalized emails right in their inbox within, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe. Uh, you see the titles, you have actually a subheading, some recap of what about the uh, lead magnet is about. In this case, I generated one about a cold email. Uh, we're gonna redo it uh, live together. We have a download guide button, um, and then we have actually a nice formatted emails. And the um, Google slide uh, lead magnet is actually presented this way, title, subheading. And we're now gonna go through the make scenario together. Go through and explain how we're gonna build this together. Uh, I'm gonna go step by step on each of the modules, but if you wanted to speed this up and actually uh, receive the blueprint, I'm extremely excited to announce I have actually launched my school community. Uh, feel free to join me over there. The link is gonna be in the description down below. Uh, you're gonna actually get the blueprint, uh, all the resources, uh, in this case, the Airtable, because we are obviously saving uh, the information to uh, an Airtable, the contact itself to the Airtable, but also the code. I'm gonna put the code as well on the description uh, of the video so you can actually rebuild this uh, in case you wanted to, but basically everything is actually done on the school community for you to join, load the blueprint and actually have this working. I'm actually also doing live co-build uh, every uh, Thursday, super cool. And Sunday, it's actually coffee hours where we catch up after a very exciting week with every of the members. All right, so now we're actually back in, into the make scenario. As you can see over here, this is actually how the system will work. I've actually built this using actually two uh, web book, so web book, uh, custom web book first and a web book response. I could have actually done this using, for instance, uh, a form builder. I could have actually used uh, a Taliso, which I use quite a lot, type form, um, those type of form builder could have actually worked. In this case, I wanted to show you an advantage of using actually card. Uh, card is actually a, a one page builder, uh, let's put it this way, which allow me to actually create this form over there. The way this works, so this is the back end of the card. As you see, the, the, the website is actually fairly easy. Uh, in this case, we are just embedded the code and I wanted to show you actually how the code looks like. A website is a Canva, right? Uh, you have actually block, uh, you have a construction of block within the Canva. And in this case, we are actually inj injecting another block within the Canva itself, right? And this is called an iframe. So if I scroll down to the code over here, um, I'm often getting the question, say, hey, Quentin, how am I actually having an interactive way, two-way communication, basically, with uh, a website? This is exactly how we do it. We do it a knife frame in this case. So we're injecting the, uh, the form with a response. And this is actually where the two-way communication come from. So we have actually the web book that received the information from make. So the, this is the trigger. And as soon as this information is being received, we are responding with the web book over there. And that's actually what's make I'm gonna show you now. For example, if I went here and I say, uh, I'm gonna actually start the automation I'm gonna show you right away starting the automation here. My name is, I'm filling this up here. Uh, I want to have actually a cold email strategy, for instance, can be anything. Provide me with, with a cold email strategy for my uh, business. If I click submit now, what's happening now? I have actually a thank you with actually some confetti party, right? Uh, and I wanted to show you as well that we can inject JavaScript library within the response. And bottom line, what's happening now is that we have trigger using the webbook from make, so from card, clicking submit, fire the webbook in the back end, right? We now have actually get the response, which is actually the response, which is the code I'm gonna show you when we're gonna build this together. I'm saving the contact information into an Airtable because again, card is not supposed to be used for form submission, so I'm not capturing any, uh, any of the leads, and so why I'm actually having this onto an Airtable so I can contact them at a later stage if I wanted to. Um, I have actually a chat GPT module in this case that's actually provide me uh, all the information needed. So if I go to choice message, 
content. Here is a Johnson. We're going to see together, it's a very good example here. We have a, the Markdown Johnson. I'm going to explain to you how I managed to bypass this to not have a, a Johnson error thrown on the parse Johnson module. But basically, I have actually all the uh, information here. I'm creating then the Google slide, creating a link, uh, a share link in this case, and then sending that over an email. So if I go back to my emails now, I should actually have here the emails that have been received a minute ago. And this is actually exactly where I can actually find this out. I can then open this. And now I have actually access to a lead magnet that's been generated, which is actually basically uh, the template uh, for the lead magnet over there. So. Without further ado, I'm gonna do, uh, go and explain to you now how this happened. And so I wanted to take this moment, this opportunity, just to show how interactive can it be, even though Card is a very, very basic uh, uh, page builder, um, but very powerful if you actually mix this up with uh, Make. So on the webbook, that's actually a custom webbook over there, nothing fancy. Um, what I'm doing, I'm, I wanted to show you as well on the code here. How do I know what code to put? The answer is actually, uh, you basically ask Claude, say, hey, Claude, I want to have an, so this is actually an embed module, right? So if I click on the plus on card and I click on embed, uh, this is actually an embed version. So this is actually a way for us to embed code in this case. And this is the code that we, that's been actually generated by Claude. We are asking uh, for the get function over there of the webhook. Right, and then the webhook is listening to actually the response coming from the second response over here, right? And here's the code. The code could have actually been way shorter if, if we wanted to. Uh, it's because I just added confetti party. So in this case, the code is downloading the script, which is the um, library that actually created the, the, the confetti itself. But basically the message, so if I go back to the website saying, thank you, your lead magnet will be ready and sent to your inbox shortly. Basically, what's happening is that if I go to the code, uh, this is exactly what I'm answering back here, right? Uh, but the code is a little more fancy because I just added a confetti party um, over there. I'm saving this information now back to, so here is the response I'm getting, right, from the form. So uh, I submitted it this way, Quentin, uh, this, the company, the emails, the magnet about, and then the summary over there. I'm saving this into now an Airtable. So nothing fancy over there. Basically, I want to get uh, the base lead magnet. The base will be actually in the description down below. So feel free to copy the base if you wanted to. I'm actually going to then pass the name, the magnet subject, the magnet summary, the company, and then the emails. Uh, so I can contact them later on if I wanted to. Here's the prompt uh, that we can pass into ChatGPT. So you are a helpful, intelligent writing assistant. Using the following inputs, generate a high quality copy for lead magnet in Johnson. And so I'm told as well, mm, the titles cannot be more than 49 characters. And here is actually all the section that I'm asking the, uh, the system to uh, return to me. Uh, so I've modified the prompt and then I give them a, a few examples over here, right? So basically here is the prompt for OpenAI. I'm as asking the system and here's the user where I'm, I'm asking the prompt uh, over there. And then I give uh, an example as well on how I want this to be returned to me. I then get uh, a uh, getting this as an output into a Johnson. Remember here, if I go to the choice message here, content. You see over there, it's mentioned, this is Markdown. So basically I have ChatGPT answer back to me within the Markdown format Johnson, which basically my Johnson is this over here, right? But I have those three back tick, which actually, if I would not treat this into the system, uh, this would have actually thrown an error into the parse Johnson. In order to actually, if you have one takeaway from this video, beside the lead magnet, obviously, is the built-in replace function that allow you to actually strip the, the backtick Johnson from the output of ChatGPT. Very, very powerful function over here. I'm basically replacing, so if I left my mouse over there, I'm replacing the text with the search string with actually the replacement string. I wanted to search within my result for something called back the three backtick Johnson, and then I'm replacing it with empty string. And then within still the same, I'm doing another replace function 
to actually remove the one at the, at the end, the one at the very end. So you see, I have, I have actually those here. So if I go here, I have actually the back tick Johnson, but then at the very end, I have those triple back tick as well. This is actually the reason why you want to have actually two replace within the replace functions. I'm actually passing this, I'm passing all this information into the Google slide over there. So the titles, uh, subheading, section one heading, two heading, and then it will ask me, Quentin, how, where do I define it? I'm going to share the template as well on the description, obviously, but here is the template. The beauty of actually using Google Slide is that as soon as you actually put anything that has uh, uh, double braces, it's actually called as a variable. So in this case, the variable is called titles. If I go to make, open the slide, now I have actually something called titles. And so I have actually created the, uh, I downloaded the template. Um, you don't have to use this template if you don't like it. You can actually find any free template online and then actually uh, adapt it to, the, to your liking if you wanted to. Same table of content. This is actually how I've actually built this up. Section one heading, two, uh, three heading, four and five. I'm then actually creating get a share link, right? This is actually the reason why we want to do it this way is that we want to have the link available for wherever, whenever they click on the button download guide, right? This is calling my Google Drive, but it's a shareable link. But that's very, very simple in this case. We want to have actually, we want to select the file. Uh, the file ID is coming from the presentation itself. Um, and we want to actually give them access to, uh, so type anyone as a reader. Out of there, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to an email and then I'm actually saying to uh, like, where is this information coming from? Like, where is the email coming from? I can go here because I got it, the submission from the, the, the card website. I can access the emails over there. So that's fairly simple. I can greet them as well with the subject saying, hey, Quentin, your lead magnet is ready, right? And here's the code of the HTML. I'm going to also put uh, the code down below uh, and I'm going to actually highlight on the code what you need to change if you wanted to actually change it yourself. So use the same templates as this, right? But then actually modify, for example, footer uh, at, at the end of the page over there. You can actually modify this obviously uh, to your liking. I'm gonna highlight the code Google Doc in the description down below where I'm gonna highlight what you have to change if you wanted to rebuild this together. And that's actually a fairly powerful, very easy automation to rebuild if you wanted to. However, your contact list, your email list is actually something that you would like to keep forever. And so basically this, this is an idea of how to actually enhance your uh, contact list. I hope this video was actually helpful. Press one once you finish with your automation and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.